We have uh, January 26th uh, with Mungia. Um, we're happy to announce that we uh, signed a multi-fight deal with Mungia and Sanfer Promotions. So we want to thank our partners, Sanfer Promotions. Um, he will be fighting in Houston, January 26th. And he will be fighting Inoue, Inoue, Tekashi Inoue. I believe he's a Japanese uh, ranked number four in the world, undefeated. Um, so that's that's our that's our plan. Uh, headlining, obviously, um, at the uh, Toyota Center in Houston. So we're really looking forward to that one. So we'll. Uh, Take a few days off and uh, and back to the grind. Um, Mungia, hey. he's a monster. 154. Too early or not appropriate to think about an all Mexican showdown with him and Canelo at some point, maybe. Too early now. Um, he's obviously fighting at 154. As you see, Canelo's fighting at 160 or 168. Uh, but yes, you're right. Mungia is a monster. Um, Canelo already said that 168 is going to be his max. So, um, current light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bivol said he's willing to come down to 168 to fight Canelo. Would that be a fight that would interest you, or is that probably a little too risky? Well, we'll we have to see. I mean, we have to see. Look, um, Canelo, Canelo is, uh, has a target on his back, you know, and everybody wants to fight him. Everybody wants to challenge him. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Anthony Joshua wants to challenge him as well. <laughs> you know, um, we have to. We have to take a look at all the 60-pound fighters and 68 first. You know, I mean, and there's so many challenges out there for him. So before we think about light heavyweights and 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 be more i think i think we should just focus on the 60 pounders and the 68 pounders oscar um i apologize if you kind of already talked about this but uh, a couple of days ago you told me that you didn't want this fight you didn't want this weight class so how impressed are you right now and are you now comfortable with him campaigning at 168 i, I do i do feel very comfortable um he uh I mean, it just doesn't seem to amaze me, like, how, how, how powerful he is and how, how that much better he's getting every single fight, you know? Um, he, looks, he looks solid at 168. He looks comfortable. So, um, after this, after this uh, performance, you know, I, I'm still a little weary of facing him with the top top guys at 168 because you never know and it's like i said this wasn't the toughest challenge at 168 it wasn't the easiest as well but you know i mean he he looked very comfortable in there very very comfortable oscar no. oscar right here now that you had a full experience with the zone what is your impression with the zone now that it now it's concluded canelo versus fielding I'm I'm very very impressed with uh, with with the zone. Um, I was uh, I was sitting next to the um, I was sitting next to the owner, and I believe it was his first fight, and he he was ecstatic. He was so motivated to continue to continue even pumping even more money into the sport of boxing. And that's music to my ears because I can now rest assured that boxing is alive and well for many years to come. And the last words he told me was, I'm sorry, Oscar, but pay-per-view is dead. And, uh, and I agree with him. I believe that with all the resources that this gentleman has, he's gonna make any fight happen on his platform, the zone. So 
I was, I was very, very impressed. Oscar, Chris Connor here from Last Call in the Fight City. Uh, you mentioned Jay Maniga. You signed him to a multi-fight deal, as you said. The top guys at 154 are all with Al Heyman. I know that you and Al have a complicated relationship. So what's the future for Jamie going forward? Well, can we see him maybe at 160 if you don't get a good deal for Jamie against, let's say, a Lara, a Charla, one of those guys? Yeah, look, I mean, like I said, we're willing to work with anybody. And we've proved that in the past. Um, Eric has a wonderful relationship with Al Heyman. Me, not so good, but Eric has a great one with him. And Eric's made deals with Al Heyman with no problem whatsoever. So I can set my ego aside just to bring you the best fights possible. That's it. That's the bottom line. I mean, that's what Golden Boy is all about, you know? Um, so this is, this is what we're all about. I mean, look, we want to make, make the best fights. That's it. Oscar, te pido un breve resumen de lo que te deja esta noche este evento aquí en el Madison Square Garden, pero como promotor. ¿Qué te deja este evento? No, pues estoy, estoy muy agradecido. Eh, por los fans que salieron a apoyar al Canelo, que salieron a apoyar al boxeo. Eh, y el Canelo obviamente demostró nuevamente que él es un gran campeón y sigue siendo un gran campeón y está mejorando y está creciendo. Eh, Madison Square Garden es una arena muy especial. Eh, te, saca, te saca lo mejor de ti. Así que estoy muy agradecido por Nueva York y por Madison Square Garden y, y por el Canelo, que demostró nuevamente lo que es el Canelo. Y el Canelo es un peleador serio, un peleador bien dedicado a su deporte y quiere ser historia, la máxima historia que él pueda hacer. Así que esta noche estoy muy contento y muy agradecido. Oh, Carl, buenas noches. Very soon. Very soon, and uh, he's a very, very impressive fighter. We, uh, we have our eye very close on him, and he's on the verge. Um, next year is going to be a big year for Duno, so we're really, really excited about him. Uh, he keeps proving, once again, day in, day out, that he belongs on, that, on the biggest stage uh, uh, there is to fight in. So I think, uh, I think by the second quarter, third quarter, I think, uh, I think he'll be ready. Oscar, buenas noches, eh, felicitaciones por este gran show, eh, Claudio Carrillo de Fox Sports. Eh, recién hablábamos de la arena, lo que había significado que el Canelo pelea acá en el Madison Square Garden. Vos en la semana hablaste del Estadio Azteca, ya sabemos que en mayo no va a ser, pero en México se generó mucha expectativa y creo que sería una forma también de seguir haciendo historia. ¿Cuándo podemos ver al Canelo en el Azteca? Sí, no, eso, eso lo vamos a hablar. Eh... Y, y estoy muy contento, mira, yo estoy, estoy feliz y contento a la misma vez de que, de que ya no va a haber pay-per-view, ¿verdad? Porque yo, mi carrera se hizo en pay-per-view y ahora ya no va a haber pay-per-view. Pero lo que hace The Zone en esta nueva plataforma digital eh, se presta para, para llevar al Canelo a diferentes partes del mundo. Y un sueño de Saúl, un sueño mío, es, siempre ha sido promover una pelea en el Estadio Azteca. Así que eso, vamos a, eso lo vamos a hablar con el gobierno mexicano, eh, con Emilio Escárraga, lo vamos a hablar. Este, tenemos mucho apoyo en México, así que eh, el gran Julio César Chávez tiene el récord, tiene el récord, eh, creo que es 130 mil almas. Eh, eh, en el Estadio Azteca y, y eso lo hizo el señor Escaraga con el equipo de Chávez y yo ha escuchado de que Emilio, el hijo quiere tratar de igualar 
eh, la historia que hizo su papá y, y Julio César Chávez con el Canelo, así que eso eso lo vamos a platicar. Oscar, right here. Uh, he asked me, he, I'm sorry, he asked me, he asked me um, if it's possible to fight Canelo um, uh, at uh, Estadio Stec in Mexico City, and uh, and I, I told him, look, this is this is the wonderful uh, this is the wonderful relationship we have with the zone is that. We're now, we, we now have the liberty to fight anywhere around the globe, whether it's, uh, whether it's here in New York, whether it's in, in, in uh, all over the world, and including Mexico City and Estadio Azteca. And it's, it's, a very, it's a big possibility, so we're, we're extremely uh, proud and happy uh, that we can form this alliance with The Zone because they've allowed us to, uh, to, uh, to promote uh, Canelo all over the world. So. He's walking, he's, he's walking now, so... He's walking now.